Hello, church family. It's my privilege to be with you during this pastor cast. I do miss you. I do look forward to the day when we get to worship under one roof together, worshiping our living God. Know that your pastors love you. Know that we care for you. Know that we pray for you regularly. A couple of announcements for you as we begin our time together. The first is to introduce to you a brand new ministry that Pure is partnering with called Foster the Bay. Here's a brief video to introduce that ministry to you. Here in Contra Costa County, there are a thousand children living in foster care. Each one of these children has a story. Each one created in love by God with great value and great purpose. Week after week, children are entering foster care and they are in need of loving families to welcome them into their homes with open hearts and open arms. Jesus said, when you welcome a child in my name, you welcome me. Too often, when children are removed from their biological families due to abuse or neglect, there are no homes within their own communities to welcome them. Can you imagine a child that you know being separated from her extended family, her friends, her teachers, her school, her community? Here in Contra Costa County, one in four children are displaced from their city and moved out of their county into other places because there are not enough homes here in Contra Costa County to welcome them. As followers of Jesus, we are invited to love our neighbors. Children entering foster care here in Contra Costa County are our most vulnerable neighbors, and we're sending them away because there's not enough homes for them here. What an incredible opportunity for followers of Jesus to enter into the lives of these vulnerable children and their families, the way that Jesus entered our stories, offering us unconditional love, kindness, and hope. Here at Foster the Bay, we believe that there is a church for every child. In fact, there are 475 churches right here in Contra Costa County. If just a fraction of these churches raised up one foster family, we'd have more than enough families to welcome children who are entering foster care week after week. But we need more than foster families. We need support for these foster families. We've found that foster parents can stay engaged for the long run when they're wrapped with four support friends who provide tangible and emotional and spiritual support for them along their journey. And this is what the church does best. Psalm 68, six says that God places the lonely in families. He does this through his people. If you sense God's spirit nudging you, I invite you to simply take the next step. When God hears the cries of the hurting, he sends his people to be his heart, his hands and his feet. I believe that many of you are being invited into the lives of vulnerable children to make a profound difference in your community. If you or your church are interested in hearing more, please visit us at fosterthebay.org. Well, we are going to be one of those churches referenced to in that video. Both Carol and Hoy and Marty Van Holten, who serve on in the Pure Ministry, they will be the liaison between Grace Bible Church and Foster the Bay. If you'd like to know more about how you can either be a foster parent or how you can be one of those families that is raised up to serve alongside foster parents, there's an orientation meeting Foster the Bay is hosting that references those dates and times and how to sign up. If that's a little bit confusing, you can feel free to call the church office and we'll plug you together with Carolyn or Marty. The second announcement is a reminder to you uh, that this Sunday, is our Lord's Table that we'll be taking together during our online service. Uh, last week, Tony noted that while it's not ideal for us to take communion online like this, it is, though we believe in unusual times like this and extraordinary times, that there is some flexibility for us to do it through these sorts of means. Um, I do want to remind you of the four guidelines Tony provided last week that will serve just as a help for us as we move forward getting ready for the Lord's Table this coming Sunday. The first is to remind you that all regular parameters apply to the Lord's Table. The first is that you have faith in Christ, that you are born again, that Christ is your Lord, He is your Savior, and that you know Him, and that you've been redeemed by Him and bought by Him, and, and you have faith in the resurrected Christ. The second, as with all Sundays, if I were up here sharing the Lord's Table with you, I'd remind you to, that, to really confess your sin, come humbly before God, have a worshipful heart, a worshipful attitude, 
knowing that your sins are forgiven, be transparent with the Lord. Confess your sin and come humbly before him. Thirdly, one of the, one of the regular parameters is be at peace. Be at peace with fellow believers. Um, typically, during the Lord's table, we fence it in such a way to remind you that if, there's, if you're at odds with a brother or sister, that the scriptures take it seriously. And the scriptures say that to leave your gift at the altar and go be at peace with your brother or sister, if you know that they have something against you, we'd ask that you do that same thing before this Sunday. If you're at odds with someone, pick up the phone, give them a call, and resolve that issue with your brother or with your sister. Next, we'd ask that you prepare the elements ahead of time. Tony shared with you about the bread, cracker, wafers that you can use as, as the element for the bread. And for the, for the juice, some kind of fruit juice, wine, if, that's in, if your conscience allows, those are fully acceptable. Um, this is just a time to prepare beforehand, know in advance what we're getting into, and set up those elements so that you're not rushing around at the last minute trying to get ready for the Lord's table. Thirdly, really seek to maintain a worshipful atmosphere during the Lord's table. Uh, I know that many of you with small children, that may not be as easy as it sounds. Um, do your best. Shepherd your family through this time Normally, they might be in the nursery or in Sunday school, and it's just real easy for you to sit quietly before the Lord and get ready to meet with the Lord during, during this time. If your children are with you, do your best to, to be with them, to worship with them, and to help them understand what we're doing together as a church. Our hope is that our time around the table really does minister to you, and, and we will only therefore be doing this during our online service. Uh, we will not be attaching the Lord's table to the recorded part of the service. We really think that, again, communion in this way is already, is, is already an extraordinary measure taking it online like we're doing. And we just feel in our hearts and in our conscience that taking it during the recorded, a recorded portion of the service would really be just that much far removed from what we believe is just Lord's intent for the church to do it when it gathers so we'd ask that, so just so you know, if you look to, look to see the recording later, the Lord's table will not be there. We're going to be taking it only live during the nine o'clock service. So again, we hope it ministers to you. We hope that it's a blessing to you. Who knows? We've never done it this way before. Let us know how it went. Uh, it'd be good for us to know as we look to, look to future months if we have to continue to do the Lord's table like this. Before we end our time together, I do want to leave you with a very short devotion from Deuteronomy chapter 8, which as the shelter in place began on day one, that's where I found myself in my reading plan. And it's where really the Lord ministered to me on that very first day. And I'd like it, I'd like you to be ministered to by it. And so I want to share it with you this, during this time. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, we hear these words. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I read those verses on that first day, on March 17th. I read those verses, and I prayed that the Lord would humble me, that he would teach me, that he would lead me, that he would expose my heart, and that in humility I would listen to what he has to say. And he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. And I wanted this pandemic time to be something that really I redeemed and, and that the Lord would help me to understand what's going on inside my heart during these times. By the grace of God, he taught me about my fears. He taught me about my frustrations. He taught me about my love for control and those sorts of things bubbled to the surface. And the Lord has been able to minister to me during this time. And it's been a great time for me. And this, this passage is really just a good time of reflection for me to think about how the Lord has led me and is leading me through this time. It sometimes feels like a desert. It's been 50 days. It's been a long time. But it's good to know the Lord is with me, that he's humbling me, that he's teaching me, and that he's seeking to expose my heart, that I might know um, 
no ways in which I don't honor him with my, with my life. Because his aim is to have me honor him with his life. And so it's been a good time for me. And there, there's so much in these, in these three verses. But, I, but for our purposes, I want you to see two things. Two things that really trials, they expose our hearts. And that trials also expose our need to trust and depend upon the word of God during these times. Verse 2 says that God humbled them, that he tested them to know what was in their hearts. Difficulty, hardship, trial, tribulation, I believe these are all gifts from God. I think he makes that clear in his word. They are sent by God, that he might know what's in our hearts, that those things might bubble to the surface, that those things that we hold on to, that we desire, that we crave, might be known to us and might be known to God. So God taught me a lot about my heart. What is he teaching you during this time? What are you learning about your own hearts? What are you learning about your own hopes, your own desires? What are you afraid of? What are you frustrated by? The pressure of this, of this pandemic, bring those to the surface. And I believe that, that Deuteronomy 8 helps us see that God is leading us through these times. He's leading you through these times, seeking to un- help you understand what it is you love most. What is your first love? Do those desires in humility need to be submitted to the Word of God? Do they need to be transformed and conformed to the Word of God? I would encourage you at this time to pray what the psalmist prays in Psalm 139. Lord, search me and know me. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there be any grievous way in me. Pray those things. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord expose your heart. Let him teach you. Lastly, Deuteronomy 32, 47 says, Your word is life. Where do you turn to find comfort? Where do you turn to find hope, peace, joy? Where do you turn to seek for refuge? Is it Netflix? Now, the word of God is clear. He says he led Israel through the desert, through the desert, to teach them that man does not live on bread alone, or in our case, We do not live on Netflix alone, but that man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are you meditating? Are you chewing upon the word? Are you dwelling upon the word? Are you ruminating upon the word? Are you letting it fill your heart and your mind so that you might might be rightly informed about how to respond during times like these, how to think during times like these? Are you guarding your heart and your mind? with the power of God's word. The heart is the wellspring of life. Are you guarding it? Are you seeking to protect it? Jeremiah says a little bit about these too. In Jeremiah 17, 7, he says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and it is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. Trust in the Lord, beloved. His timing is perfect. His word is perfect. His purposes are perfect. Make time for God's word to sink deep into your heart. So then the very roots of your faith sink deep into the foundations of Christ, that no matter how long this pandemic goes, no matter how hard this drought feels, no matter how hot the heat gets, Your roots will be firmly planted, and you will bear fruit. You will. The scriptures assure you of that. Fill your heart and your mind with truth so that the word of God may bear evidence in your life that you have a hope, a hope that is beyond today, a hope that is eternal. Let the word of life inform how you respond during times such as these. Beloved, how long might this go? We're on day 50. Who knows how much longer we have. But I want to simply remind you that while it has been a long season apart, our position as pastors remains the same. That of submission both to God and to our government. We will continue to hold online streaming services until such time as we are permitted to safely and lovingly open our doors for us to gather again. We remain convinced at this point that our government isn't singling out churches to keep us from gathering, 
And it seems as future phases that the governor proposes will soon allow gatherings such as ours to reopen in time when they feel it's appropriate and safe. And so we submit to that. We submit to it. So we ask that you continue to pray for us, nevertheless. Pray for us to have wisdom. Pray for us to have the grace of God, the strength of God, to continue to shepherd the flock well during this season. Remain encouraged, my friends. God is with us. He is at work. He is transforming lives. He is committed to the body. He is committed to transforming us. He is committed to his kingdom's growth. It will grow. The pandemic will not slow it down. Be encouraged by that. Be convinced of that. Know that he will do all things for his own glory. And let us, when we gather again, know that we can sing praise and glory to God, knowing that his name was honored and that we trusted trusted in him the whole way through it. I look forward to being with you. The Lord be with you all.